All right, everyone. Um, welcome to this webinar, or welcome to this class. Uh, this is Mark uh, from FXI. Now, as usual, we've got our ECB announcement, and um, I'm here to cover that ECB announcement with you. Now, this isn't one of those ordinary ECB announcements where people don't care about um, what's going to be said. Although we don't expect any changes in um, terms of the interest rate uh, for the Eurozone, we do think that this time around, this particular ECB announcement may have something to it. What are we watching out for? Well, although we've seen a recovery in, um, in European data, one particular weakness or one particular um, deficiency in uh, ECB policy has been the lack of financing, the lack of money available to new businesses or to businesses in general in the Eurozone. What are we saying? If you want to put up a business in the Eurozone, it's hard to find financing. It's hard to find, um, if you want to expand your operations, it's hard to find the money to do it. And a big question for the ECB right now is, okay, how do we resolve this? How do we make doing business in the Eurozone easier? And of course, the only answer to that question is, well, can you print money? Lately, there has been a, sh a shift in um, thinking within the ECB. The Germans, who are always concerned about inflation, um, previously signaled that, you know what, it's fine for us if uh, some money printing activity happens. Because the Germans themselves have also seen some, um, some, some downside risk to controlling inflation too tightly. And besides, we really don't have any inflation to speak of from the Eurozone anyway. So that's really the big question in um, today's ECB announcement. Are we going to hear from uh, the ECB that they're going to start adopting quantitative easing measures? Remember that for the last year, we've heard and heard and heard and heard about um, the readiness of the ECB to take action, the readiness of the ECB to print money, but we really have not seen them print money. So this time around, speculation is um, we are going to get those uh, monies printed. And this is not really something that we will know in 45 minutes. This is something that uh, we will know during the press conference on how close the argument is for adopting some form of a QE already. Why is this significant for us? It's significant for us because from a policy perspective, although we have not seen the UK, we have not seen the US raise interest rates, expectations are they are on their way out of the easing cycle. Whereas if we go Eurozone, the ECB, the Eurozone, is just on its way in. It's just going to get started with this money printing story, which means that if today we hear specifics about a plan to print money, we hear the when and where of uh, how this thing is going to happen, we could potentially be setting our euro for a period of sustained weakness. Now, I would personally suggest that uh, we take a look at some very obscure crosses, your ERNZD, your... Uh, well, EURGBP is not obscure. Everybody trades that. But EURNZD is something to consider. EURAUD is something to uh, look into. If indeed we can confirm that the ECB is printing money. In fact, I'd probably say, let's go take a look at your uh, 
EURAUD. What is the potential? Okay. Now, um, I was thinking, are we going to go EURUSD or are we going to go what I really like at this point? What I really like at this point is uh, to go to your EUR uh, AUD. So let's uh, do that, folks. Let's uh, go to your EUR AUD first. Why do I like EUR AUD? Let me put it this way. What did we get earlier this morning? This morning, we had payroll data, or rather, we have uh, uh, um, jobs data out of uh, Australia. And what did we get? We had your employment change data in Australia coming out 14.2, a lot stronger than the consensus forecast. Previous results were revised even higher. And the unemployment rate uh, remains steady at 5.8, despite expectations that the unemployment rate will go up to 5.9. So for me, um, I've got argument that says, uh, can I go look for a a hawkish angle from the RBA. And what are we trying to look at here? What are we trying to compare? We're trying to compare the policy of the Eurozone, which is we which we expect um, would soon include money printing against a country where policy may soon push to the can we raise interest rates angle. So, in fact, between the U.S. and uh, the U.K. and Australia, there's a lot more speculation that Australia could be the first to actually start raising rates between the three of them. And given that Aussie rates are already higher at 2.5, the prospects of a widening in the spreads basically creates greater fundi argument for me to go EUR AUD, which is why let's go do that now. Let's take a look at our EUR um, AUD chart. How does it look? Is there plenty of potential for that chart? Let's see big picture. Where is EUR AUD on a monthly scale? On a monthly scale, it seems to me that um, we've actually established a top back in January. So we're really talking long term here because we're talking policy changes. And policy changes tend to lead to long term um, trends developing. So what do we get again? Um, on a monthly scale, we've had argument that uh, this is going to turn now after rallying from uh, middle of 2012. No, not, not middle, but uh, basically through 2012, 2013. If I go weeklies, what am I looking at in our EUR AUD? Um, we've just triggered a head and shoulder. Uh, we triggered a head and shoulder a while back. What else is there in uh, this particular chart? Looks like you tried to pull back to uh, the neckline of your head and shoulder. And now we're looking for a disruption of your uh, breakout. Let me see this on a daily scale. Where are we? The daily picture, we've actually sold off a bit already. In fact, uh, not just a bit, but we've actually exceeded average changes. But my point is this. You sold off in your EUR AUD because you had good data out of Australia earlier. What if during the press conference we hear that the ECB said money will be printed? If money gets printed, 
one of the main beneficiaries of uh, the likely fund flows will be Australia. Like we said, interest rates there are already at 2.5, and people are expecting it to go up. So if you're, um, if you're a lazy investor, one of the things that you can do is find a low interest rate loan in the Eurozone. Maybe you can borrow in the Eurozone at uh, a 0.5% uh, rate or 0.75% rate. And then um, you can just put that money in uh, Australia, make your 2.5% or get 2.5%, expect that that would widen further. You effectively get 1.25. So this carry trade is something that we ought to seriously look for over the next uh, few days, over the next few weeks, over the next few months, if the ECB signals that uh, money printing will soon start. Everybody's waiting for this money printing story. Is it going to start now or not? If it starts now among our candidates, like we said, this ERAUD, I would not hesitate looking for a test of this uh, lows, our lows for the year in uh, ERAUD. I would not hesitate looking for your 46 to 48 area if we get uh, this money printing going. Um, guys, any questions so far? So. Of course, the ECB is not going to go out there and say, okay, we'll print money. What they'll probably say is they will start be, they will start buying bonds from governments. They will start cor buying corporate bonds. So this is an effort to inject liquidity into the system, and that is what we mean by money printing. They start buying bonds, but the money that they use to buy those bonds will not be coming from uh, savings, will not be coming from capital, but will be coming from the printing press. Remember that of all the institutions in government, it is only the central bank which has the power to print money. So that's what we're looking for. The story, the argument of money printing to get out there. Once we have that, we tend to think long-term trends. We tend to think it shouldn't be difficult to take out 46, 48 over the next uh, couple of days. I tend to think, can we see your EUR AUD testing 50 fib replacement of its rally from uh, last year? So that's the kind of um, long-term picture, big picture that we could expect if this were to happen. Of course, um, it could be that nothing happens. This is the ECB after all. There's so many uh, issues. There's so, there's so much dynamic that uh, goes on in any decision that it makes. So if nothing happens, what are we going to do? Well, if there's nothing there, I wouldn't uh, necessarily abandon the idea of selling EUR AUD. We do have a bullish uh, outlook for Aussie by itself. And our technical outlook is also bearish for EUR AUD. You have a new bear cross happening in MACD or stochastic is heading for oversold territory. You have a rejection from your daily EMA lines. So there's plenty here that says I can short my EUR AUD. All right. So again, one of our uh, primary choices. Um, I've been reading a lot of websites and uh, someone was suggesting that the decision of the ECB whether to print money or not would probably lie on your euro pound. So let's take a look at the euro pound. Let me just see the big picture for EUR uh, GBP. On a monthly scale, we seem to be in the middle of our historical ranges. 
we were just above that uh, 50 fib area. If you look at your price chart, um, there's no compelling argument for uh, taking any action. If I go weeklies, um, nothing impressive there. Let me go dailies. Daily scale, nothing impressive. We've been sideways. So what am I trying to point out? I'm trying to point out that um, nobody seems to be pricing in the idea that uh, we've got some money printing happening. So if indeed um, we do get that news out of uh, the ECB, I've got um, argument to say, or I can, I can easily say, no one's in this trade yet, so everybody who reacts will probably react. <clears throat> everybody will, who reacts to it will probably react in like manner. There's nothing compelling for them to do a strategy which is not textbook, which means that I'll be quickly looking for a sell-off in your EUR uh, GBP. Hey, Pan and Fire. Nice to hear from you. Um, unfortunately, I do not have a chart of the dollar index. So we could discuss it from a broad picture. Yeah, unless you, you know any uh, web-based chart for it, I can't recall one uh, off the top of my head. So without seeing the dollar index, what are we expecting? Um, we've actually been getting argument that uh, ought to call for a stronger dollar. Yeah, let's take a look at EURUSD next. That would be a good idea. Why am I saying that we have argument for a stronger dollar? Consider where our charts are, overextended in dumping your, uh, in dumping your, your green back. We haven't heard of any uh, big new problem for the U.S. In fact, we've had some impressive reads as far as uh, job generation is concerned. So given that, I'd really love to just focus on having a stronger dollar. Well, let's take a look at ERUSD. What's with EURUSD, guys? Look at the big picture. This is what I really like. Look at the big picture. It looks to me like we have uh, a failed attempt at a bullish breakout. You go weeklies and you have an ascending uh, wedge. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. You have to remember that from a technical perspective, when you talk about ascending wedges, you expect that the breakout, if it does happen, will be on the downside. Nothing in my weekly candlesticks tells me that this is going to break lower anytime soon. But we know that statistically, more often than not, when you have an ascending wedge, you will break lower. All right. Um, what else do I have here? Let me just take a peek at the month lease. You actually are trying to establish a, establish a bullish view with your monthlies, but nothing there so far. We already have a rejection from R2. Indicator-wise, we look bullish in the big picture. For our charts, um, also looking at a conference of buys in the making. Our lease, um, you're just in overbought territory. Your MACD is uh, picking up, but price action is now bearish. Um, let me put it this way. 
let us see what happens in the press conference. Again, if we hear that uh, the ECB can give us specifics on a money printing scheme, not just say that we're ready to print money, we will buy this, we will buy that, but have the ECB say in two weeks' time or we will start doing this soon. Give us specific dates. Give us a detail of uh, what you're going to do and not the conditions on what will make you do things. Give us that and um, I would argue at that point for just dumping your uh, euro. So uh, for me, it's really a fundamental market right now. It's really about what will be said during the press conference. Ignore the actual actual uh, rate decision. It is unlikely that the ECB will, rate, will cut rates. Why? ECB's uh, interest rates are already at uh, 25 BPS. If it cuts rates, that would uh, make it in line with uh, the Japanese, the Americans with a floating, um, with a with a floating rate targeted at uh, less than 25 BPS. So, folks, this isn't about can we get a rate cut. Of course, if you do get a rate cut, then that becomes argument for you to just dump your uh, euro. But a rate cut right now is highly unlikely. Um, the strategy really calls for... Let me put it this way. Um, if the ECB were to cut rates now, it effectively will give up one of its last big remaining guns, big remaining tools to influence the market. It would uh, put it... Tell me, um, yeah, I don't know how we can do that uh, through this facility. You can email me for uh, that. Let me leave you guys my email. Anything you see in my screen, I can share. So here's my email. It's my blog, although it's not updated. <laughs> So leave it alone, but use the email. Hey, Ian. Thank you for joining. Good afternoon. So, again, um, this isn't one of those boring ECB decisions. Krishna, uh, um, I would expect Euro to potentially weaken. Like I said, I don't expect a rate cut, but I do expect that during the press conference, we will hear about serious discussions on uh, adding more liquidity on how such a thing can be achieved without necessarily printing money. Oh, here's the mail. Let me just uh, post it again. <clears throat> Excuse me. There you go. Now, as far as the dollar across the board, um, I would point my finger to what will happen in the equity markets later. I know Janet Yellen will be talking again, but um, the impact of Yellen's uh, speech will not be as big as it was yesterday because we know now what she will be saying, and she'll be saying that um, despite the recovery, we ought to be able to expect. Oh, thanks, uh, Pen and Fire. Let me just open that. And, and we will examine it. Oh, Johans, thank you for that. So we should have our decision in about three minutes' time. Again, I do not expect to get any decision. Um, calling rates uh, or rather raising interest rates or cutting interest rates is the final at this point uh, cutting interest rates is the final uh, tool available for um, available for the ECB so I don't 
see myself, uh, or rather I don't see the ECB um, cutting rates. Not at this stage. That's the, you know, that's the last big gun. If they do that now, it will be seen as an act of desperation. Um, I wouldn't necessarily look at uh, selling it now. We do have average daily range. We've actually exceeded average range in Aussie. Um, should we be selling it? There's no signal in price action that um, it is about to reverse. What we have is a consolidation. What we have is a pause for uh, the rally. We've got good argument to expect your Aussie to rally. In fact, um, I'm looking at Aussie to just take out the latest uh, swing highs over the next uh, in, the, in the coming week. Try to push to your 95 uh, psychological price point. But let's take a look at that dollar index chart. Exactly, exactly. I'd agree with the uh, name on this one. It's a buy and dips at this point. I haven't used this chart in a while. Let me just unpin this. So how cheap is the dollar index? Looks like um, we are at a good support for our dollar index. I guess um, having the ECB decide to print money as well, decide to start its own um, easing cycle, or rather money printing cycle, would be a nice argument for me to say dollar index uh, should pick up. I know it's well supported. I've got uh, sell signals from our uh, EMAs. But that's the weekly. Then we go dailies. What are we getting? Tried to ease further, but uh, not making progress. Let me go intraday. In name, thank you. Yeah. It's unlikely that, uh, like I said, it's unlikely that they will change anything. It is uh, really an act of desperation for them to uh, decide to, to change rates now. All right, guys, let me just get back to our MP4. That's the question. Do we want to jump in on this bounce? Because... We know that we have our press conference in 45 minutes. And we are already at average daily range for your uh, euro. So I am not keen about joining any attempt to rally further from here. Yeah, you could, have, um, you could be the one holding the bag once uh, people get out of this. I mean, I, none of the pros were expecting a rate cut, so why move up? When, uh, I guess some would say market was disappointed, there was no uh, rate action, there was no rate cut. But again, that's not really what the uh, market is looking for. market is looking for a commitment from uh, the U.S. to do something. Well, uh, what would happen, I, I, let's put it this way, press conference will give us a detail. And if in the press conference uh, we do hear 
that there's an outline on uh, what to do, um, when will they start uh, printing money, that would be the time that I will go euro and that would be the time that I will dump our euro. I know we've had good data from uh, the Eurozone lately, but a lot of people are now looking for more than uh, the previous rate cuts. They're looking for, they're asking for the next uh, government intervention. And that means uh, having money printed. If they don't do anything, technically you have a bullish trend. So yes, that would be a good buy on dips if they don't do anything. So that's the key question. Are they or are they not going to do anything? And um, I'm guessing that they will be outlining to us the measures that will have them move. So it is possible that the ECB, highly likely that the ECB will surprise later, cut rates. All right, guys, any comments, anything that you'd like us to look into? Um, that's a good argument there, Neem. However, how high is uh, CPI really compared to the tolerances that uh, the bank has? Well, you're definitely right about it. Um, it is hard for them to do that. I mean, institutional memory. not just institutional memory, but collective memory is actually part of it. Racial memory is uh, part of what's preventing, um, what's preventing the ECB from printing money aggressively. Let me just go look at the one-minute picture. Let me see how uh, the swings uh, has turned out. really couldn't uh, get a follow through after your uh, initial spike and now I'm guessing that uh, we're just going to ease back down as much as possible this isn't really a chart that uh, you'd like to avoid uh, the buy side now besides you already have average daily ranges and that's pretty important well let me get back to overview guys Neem if core rate is at 1%, then there's really room for them uh, to take action. There's room for them to print money. Now, let's take a look at our ERAUD. Did it move? Did we have a further sell-off? Maybe later. Well, it does, but remember that uh, the Bundesbank is also very independent, and the Bundesbank has already said that um, there's nothing wrong with uh, printing money. We're now agreeing to it. Maybe. Yes, but that's a big step. I mean, agreeing in principle is a big step for the for the Bundesbank because they've been the ones who, right from the start, have been against it. This is the reason why Trichet, when he was the BOE governor, or rather the ECB governor, couldn't take action. I'm sure they can be very creative. They don't need to fund the governments directly. What they need to do is uh, provide liquidity in some way to uh, the private sector. 
you basically just have to crowd out um, people from the private sector, force them to choose uh, to putting money in the in government. <laughs> ah, um, you also have to look at the the makeup, the demographics. I think the demographics um, may not really lead to that kind of response. Remember that um, it's an aging society. People who age tend to worry, tend to hold cash rather than uh, spend it. Yeah, they need to create jobs for young people. How do you do that without um, putting money in the in the in, in government? So you have to encourage the private sector. <laughs> Yes. So again, this is a cycle uh, that has to be broken somehow. You need to give the young people jobs because they're the ones who tend to spend. They're the ones who are willing to borrow in order to buy stuff. Neem, you sound like um, you like reading a lot of the economic uh, materials out there. So it looks like um, no big response for our ERUD, although like we said, we've already seen your average daily range. However, I would still look forward to getting a stronger Aussie, a weaker Euro, particularly after uh, we've heard from the press conference. All right, let me get back to overview. Any comments, questions for this point, guys? So we're not advocating uh, taking action. Look at where your uh, euro is. Pulled back already. Well, for him, if he takes that bold step, of saying, I will print money, I would expect that he'll be able to do so. Imagine if uh, Draghi were to say, I'm going to print uh, a trillion euros over the next uh, 24 months. If he says something like that, then um, its medium to long term impact is uh, to really weaken the currency. So again, it is certainly possible for Draghi. So guys, we have about 30 minutes until um, the press conference. Yeah, that's why I'm expecting that, well, not action, because you're not likely to if you want things moving, if you want to create jobs, if you want to um, unconventional measures to introduce liquidity to the financial system. Um, at this point, not quite yet. I'd really love to look for a good floor in your dollar yen. I'd love to get to this area, your... 101.23 region, 101.22 region first before I start thinking about playing with it. Is it? I don't really use dynamic moving averages, so I'll take your word for it, uh, Pan and Fire. All right, guys, um, we've kind of run out of time already. So again, just watch out for the press conference in about uh, 29 minutes. Um, what are we looking for from the press conference? 
we're looking for them to confirm plans, at least expectations of a plan to introduce liquidity to the system. And the mere fact that they're going to do that ought to help weaken your euro. Okay? So, guys, thank you for attending. I will, I guess, I hope to see you more. <laughs> I can't comment yet. Hope to see you more uh, often. Thank you, folks.